Full-size Bronco or Sport? Which one are you taking? Up next on Throttle Out. Hey, what's up guys? Justin with ExtremeTerrain.com here. Now, it's only been a few short months since both the Bronco and the Bronco Sport burst onto the scene. And in that short time, both have become insanely popular and extremely hard to get. Now, sure, you could argue most of the fanfare has probably been around the big boy over here. The Sport is still doing very well and both, again, are really, really popular with fans. So that led us to ask the question, which one of these rigs is better suited for you and why? To help answer that question here today, we're gonna break this video down into three different segments. We have modability, practicality, and off-road capability. And again, hopefully by the end of this video, you have a better idea of which one's better for you and your lifestyle. Guys, we hope you enjoy this kind of content. We certainly love bringing it to you. Plus, we've got some future product video and install videos coming your way very soon, so be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like what you're seeing. First up, let's talk modability. Now, here at ExtremeTerrain.com, we are a parts company. It's what we do. So I'm happy to say that both the Bronco and the Bronco Sport offer great platforms to personalize, modify, and ultimately upgrade. Now, at the time of each respective launch, Ford said the Bronco had over 200 factory-backed accessories at the ready, while the smaller Sport had just over 100. So that should give you your first indication of the modability between the two. But let's start off with the big Bronco here because the sky really is the limit when we're talking about modability and the new Bronco. Now, it's no secret that Ford went directly at the Jeep when we're talking about competition. And here at ExtremeTerrain.com, we know about the Jeep. We also know they're one of the most modified vehicles on the planet. And I'm happy to say that the Bronco is just as modifiable, if not more so. For crying out loud, we got fender flares that come off in a matter of seconds. Bronco bolts scattered throughout the vehicle, which that's an indication of modability. And the, They've even stamped lift me baby in the fender well. So Ford is basically begging you guys to modify these things. Now, speaking of lifts, there are already owners out there outfitting their rigs with smaller lifts for a 35, even a 37 inch tire with minor suspension modifications, and we're just getting started. But coming back to just how modifiable the big Bronco is, it really is staggering. We talked about the Bronco bolts and the easily removable fender flares already, but we can't forget about biggies like the easy easily removable top and doors. Bumpers come on and off in a matter of minutes here, guys. You have lighting brackets scattered throughout the entire rig, along with those upfitter switches. I mean, if modifying is your thing, the Bronco is gonna offer you endless possibilities. Now, with all that being said, the Sport here is no slouch when it comes to modularity and modability as well. And that's evident with our first edition Badlands and other trim level sports that Ford offers. Now, at the time of this video and at the time of its release, Ford does offer five factory back bundle packages depending on your lifestyle or your hobbies. For instance, there is a water accessory package that adds storage capabilities for up to two different kayaks. You have a snow accessory bundle, which is gonna be for my skiers and snowboarders out there. Storage bundle, which is going to increase your storage capabilities by over 16 cubic feet. Bike accessory bundle, which is pretty self-explanatory. And last but not least, my personal favorite, the camping bundle, which is going to add a two-person Yakima roof tent along with a corresponding awning. Now, a lot of those bundle accessory packages are made possible thanks to the sport's very versatile roof rack here. So while you're not getting the fun of a removable roof or doors, you are getting a very functional rack that's serves as a home base for current and even future modifications. But outside of the roof mounted stuff, a ton of the old favorites still apply to the sport model here, including a bunch of current fender flare options, side steps. There are a bunch of lighting options as well, thanks to Ford's accessory ready package, and also things like small lifts and wheel and tire combination. But all that being said, guys, it's still a far cry from what you're getting with the big Bronco. In fact, even with a small lift, the Sport can only fit a set of 31 inch tires, which pales in comparison to the 35s and 37s we're seeing with the big Bronco given similar modifications. So in summary, if you're the type of owner who really leaves nothing stock and no stone unturned when it comes to modifying, the big Bronco is just simply gonna be the better option for you. On the other hand, if you're the type of owner who likes to do a few subtle modifications over time, kind of scratch that itch along with modifying and maximizing the roof possibilities, the Sport is going to give you that ability and then some. But kudos to Ford for knowing their audience and making both of these rigs easy to modify and personalize. But what do you say we move on to our next category and that is practicality. 
Now, both of these rigs, bone stock, are gonna be very practical, right? I mean, both offer enough creature comforts and tech through endless trim packages and even two different engine options per at the time of this video to give owners a choice in that regard. However, the devil tends to be in the details in regards to things like practicality or everyday livability. So what do you say we take a closer look at that one? Now the big Bronco is just that, big, especially when compared to its little brother here in the shop. In fact, it feels way larger than the foot and a half of added length or four inches of added width might otherwise indicate. And that really is apparent once you see the two side by side here. And those numbers actually translate to feel once you start moving these things around. For instance, pulling them in and out of the shop or in and out of parking spaces, that added size really becomes apparent behind the wheel. But let's talk about fuel economy through different engine choices. The big Bronco, you got the 2.3 liter four cylinder or the 2.7 liter V6. Four cylinder does get the manual option, which the Sport does not, or you both got the option of the 10 speed automatic. Now, both engines move the big Bronco around rather well. However, the latter of the two, that 2.7 liter V6, really hustles the big boy around thanks to the 415 pound feet of torque. However, when that trans translates to fuel economy, the numbers aren't fantastic, right? 2.7 liter V6 gets a combined 19 miles per gallon, and that's with the base wheel and tire combo. Sub in the Sasquatch 35, and that number drops to 17 miles per gallon combined. Not great. Now the Sport here on the other hand does also give you two different engine options. There's a smaller three cylinder, it's a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, along with a larger two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that we currently have in the Badlands. As you might imagine, both are gonna do far better than the big Bronco, but the smaller engine in particular, is gonna give you a combined 28 miles per gallon, whereas the two liter gives you a combined 23 miles per gallon. So again, far better than the big Bronco in many ways, and that's a difference you're really gonna feel feel week in and week out at the pump, especially if prices keep rising like they currently are. Now, not that I can imagine a lot of people will, the little Bronco can still tow, in fact, up to 2,200 pounds, which is roughly 1,300 pounds less than the big Bronco's 3,500 pound capacity. Inside our full-size four-door Big Bend, the layout is extremely well-organized, easy to navigate, and the driver position is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'm happy to report that this thing is big guy friendly. Not exactly something I can say about the Sport right next to us. Now, outside of that, I really like the addition of the center console shifter along with the two inches of added headroom compared to the Sport. Now, no surprise here, the four-door full-size Bronco does benefit from 20 additional additional cubic feet of storage space with those rear seats folded down. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though, guys, inside the full-size Bronco. One big downfall for me here in regards to livability or practicality is the wind noise from the factory soft top, which is extremely apparent at highway speeds. No wind noise to report inside the Sport here on the highway. In fact, even with the optional all-terrain tires on our Badlands, things remain nice and quiet. Instead, the only noise we do hear is the embarrassingly fake engine noise being pumped through the otherwise fantastic 10-speaker B&O stereo. But noise aside, I really like the actual appearance of the interior here inside the Sport, especially with our Badlands model. Now the Navy Pier leather seats are very handsome. Touch points are all very modern, very cool. It's a sharp looking interior. However, getting back to that big guy friendly thing I just mentioned, finding the correct driving position for me at 6'1", 200 pounds has proved to be a little bit of a challenge inside the Sport. Now, even at my correct driving position, my arm is so far back that it's 
it's no longer even close to the door mounted armrest and the possibility of a passenger behind me is all but out the window. On top of that button layout inside the sport here is a little confusing at times. I find myself searching for the correct button and I oftentimes find myself switching on the rear mounted windshield wiper when going to turn the engine on or off. Small gripes I know but gripes just the same. Speaking of which I feel like the interior could be made so much better with just a simple addition of a console shifter in place of the dial. So what does this all mean when it comes to everyday livability or practicality? Well, I guess this is one of those cases where it really is in the eye of the beholder and really what's most important to you guys watching at home. Here's my take. I think the Bronco is a fun toy that could serve as a comfortable daily, but probably better suited to be a second car slash weekend warrior. Now the Bronco Sport, on the other hand, with its smaller size and better fuel economy is far better suited for commuter duties without the drawbacks of the added wind noise and the slightly rougher ride of the bigger tire equipped Bronx. So in my opinion, advantage sport. Last but not least, we have off-road capability. And I know what you're thinking, this one seems like it's gonna be pretty lopsided in favor of the big boy over there. And while you're not wrong, Ford did wanna make sure the Sport was capable or worthy of wearing the Bronco badge. Now on paper, the big Bronco no doubt trumps the Sport in every conceivable off-road stat with one exception, size. Now that's something you can't exactly change easily and the smaller size of the sport here will certainly help it in tighter situations off-road or on some of those tighter trails. Now, of course, both do receive four-wheel drive, Ford's trail control feature and the GOAT mode, basically these off-road cheat codes to help get you through specific situations off-road, but even some sticky situations on-road as well. Now, the amount of GOAT modes you get is dependent on the trim level of your specific rig. Both also do get an optional rear locker. The Bronco actually gets a front as well, but the Bronco's rear locker is actually a true to form locker, right? The Sport here on the other hand, well, it does get a locker sort of, but it's kind of this combination between a twin disc clutch rear differential working with the rear brakes to get you most of the way there and deliver traction where it's needed most in the rear tires. But the big Bronco is just far better suited to handle the abuses of off-roading, thanks largely in part to the body on frame design, which again goes back to our first category of more modability, right? You're gonna get things like bigger tires, bigger suspension lifts, which ultimately result in more ground clearance. You have more armor on the truck, that's gonna protect you a little bit more. And frankly, all of those are gonna be a lot more limited on the Sport over here. The big Bronco also has recovery options readily available, such as a winch. So if you ever do get in over your head off-road, you can rescue yourself safely. And again, that's not not necessarily available on the sport at this time. But if you're not looking to tackle the hardest trails at your local off-road park, and you know the sport's limitations, there's a lot this little guy can and will do off-road. It is very good, and I certainly don't mean to take anything away from it in that regard, especially when we're talking about our first edition Badlands here, which is equipped with a small lift from the factory, those all-terrain Falcon tires, and of course, some more off-roady bits like that semi-locking rear differential we just talked about. But if we're talking all out off-road performance, just balls to the wall, it's gonna be the Bronco all day for me and twice on Sundays. Ultimately, like most car buying decisions out there, this one really is gonna boil down to what matters most to you and what fits better for your situation. Are you content with minor modifications and value maneuverability and fuel economy to all out rock crawling? Well, if so, the Sport is a no brainer. On the other hand, if you really love what the Bronco is all about and what it was designed to be, that wind through your hair, dirt in your face, open air experience, then the big Bronco is gonna be really hard to beat. But hey, we want to thank Ford for sending us this really awesome sport to play with all week. And truth be told, guys, I really enjoyed this far more than I thought I would originally. Now, guys, we want to hear from you as always. Which one of these are you taking? I have a feeling a lot of you are probably going to choose the big Bronco. But hey, if you dig the sport, let us know and let us know as to why. In the meantime, I'm Justin. Thanks for watching. And for all things Bronco, keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.